Hello, Entheos community. Once again, uh, Travis Thomas here, uh, excited to do yet another Optimal Living Academy event. Uh, I'm just excited. Before we even start, can, can we just acknowledge what an awesome, awesome site Entheos is and the Optimal Living Academy? And obviously, I am biased, but uh, it's just wonderful, wonderful to be here. And uh, I would do one of these every day if I could. Maybe that's a goal. Maybe a goal to do one of these every day. But you get me, you get me today. Uh, once again, my name is Travis Thomas. I'm the creator and founder of 30 Days of Yes. And uh, I am a leadership coach at IMG Sports Academy in Florida, working with young athletes and professional athletes, helping them develop the skills and qualities that not only make them successful in their sport, but in life in general. But today I'm excited to talk to you all about, uh, really about an adventure. And so today's topic, it's super catchy. It's a really catchy title. It is one wife plus three kids plus one minivan minus a plan equals one big adventure. It just kind of rolls off your tongue when you say it, right? It just rolls off your tongue. It also could be known as how to live in a van down by the river for any of you Chris Farley fans out there. But I, I, I stuck with one wife, three kids, one minivan, my plan equals one big adventure. And so I want to kind of throw kind of a, a, a warning out there at the beginning that if anyone is starting to watch this event and they think, oh, this is just one of those crazy adventure guys who is really smart and he's really clever and he knows a lot of things and this was no big deal for him to uh, throw his family into a minivan for seven months. I'm not that guy. Trust me, I am not that guy. So this is kind of one big adventure for dummies. Maybe that's our third title, one big adventure for dummies. Because really, uh, this was about me, who I'm not. I'm, not, I'm just not that guy who who goes off on adventures or does crazy thing. I'm kind of a, a, a I'm a wuss. Let's be let's be honest. I'm a wuss. And so this was a big deal for me. So just to paint the picture of what I actually did is uh, <clears throat> I was working at a school up in St. Louis. I had been there for four years, and uh, I had started 30 Days of Yes, um, uh, less than six months uh, uh, previous to this. And, and each year, kind of each school year would come around, and I would do some prayer, and I'd do some meditation. And when I knew I had to decide whether I would come back for the following year, I would just kind of listen and pray and meditate and just see what felt right. And it became really clear to me that spring that it was time to move on. And there was no bitter feelings and there was no, uh, it's time to move on and do this. Just the sense of peace was it's time to move on. But what does that mean? So we, I didn't have a plan. And so my wife and I, we thought, okay, we homeschool our kids, which is a whole other MPO's talk, but we homeschool our kids and we were like, so what do we want to do? What do we want to do? And so this, this next leap, this adventure was really all about, well, what is my purpose and what feels authentic to me? And my, my individual purpose that I crafted about six or seven years ago is to inspire myself and others to live joyously, peacefully, and triumphantly in yes, to live your biggest yes. And so I kind of felt like, well, what, what does that look like for me and the family right now? And I knew that it was time for me to move on. So one, I knew it was time for me to move on. Two, I knew that I had to sort of be authentic to my purpose. Three, I wanted to give, my wife and I wanted to give our kids the adventure of seeing the country, seeing the United States. And, and four, I selfishly wanted to see the United States. And so that, that was our motivation. What we ended up doing, we had no plan for. And so it just, but I knew it was time and I knew it was, it was right to move on. Uh, I, like I said, I had just started 30 Days of Yes and I was starting to grow it and I wanted to give that as much attention as possible. So my wife and I just started thinking about, well, what would we do? And so we thought, wouldn't it be great to drive the kids uh, around the country? And so ultimately that's what we ended up doing. I, I ended my job at the end of May. As of June, we knew that we had summer plans. We kind of could stay with uh, uh, at a family house up in Michigan for a couple of months, and we did that. But then we hit the road. We put all of our stuff that we couldn't fit in our minivan into storage, which happened to be my sister's basement. And we jumped in the car. We left a message on Facebook, and we let the adventure begin. And so for the next seven months, really from June on, for the next seven months, we didn't have a plan. And we ended up going uh, to uh, uh, nine different states. I mean, we went through a bunch of states, but we stayed for uh, periods of time in nine different states. We stayed with three different family members for periods of time, three different friends for periods of time, 
then we camped in different places, a couple hotels, and uh, and just the adventure ended us back in Florida, where we are now. And so I'll get to more of those specifics. Uh, and so I say that this is for you. This is for any of you who are watching this, and you're thinking to yourself, there's that one thing, or wouldn't it be cool if, if we as a family could do this, or wouldn't it be cool if I could finally do this thing that I've really been yearning to do? What does your one big adventure look like? And so I'm here as proof just to say you can do it. You can do it, and you don't need to be a stud who has everything figured out because I'm not that guy. I'm a pretty normal schmo who is stupid enough to say leap and the net will appear, and we jumped, and it was a crazy adventure, a lot of fun, and a lot of learning along the way, and hopefully I'm going to share those with you. So let's jump into this. So big idea number one is it starts and ends with purpose. This is not about what you do. This is not about the adventure. This is about you having a clear sense of what your authenticity feels like, what your purpose feels like, what, what is really yearning from your heart and your spirit, what you're on fire about, and really listening to that voice inside of you that's kind of whispering or maybe yelling to you, we need to do this. It's time to do this. And when you're really clear about what your purpose is, again, it's not the what, it's the why. Why are you feeling inspired to do this? And, and, and for my wife and I with our journey, it was all about um, we knew it was time to move on. We wanted to give our kids this experience. And we knew for us it was just trust. We knew that this is what felt right, and so we took that next step. And so for you, it's not so much about, okay, yeah, I want to, I want to, I need to go do something crazy. It's not about the doing something crazy. It's about what is speaking to your heart. And so if I were to ask you, do, do you have a clear sense of what your individual purpose is? If you have a clear sense of what that is, and this adventure aligns itself with your purpose, well, it might be time to take a step in that direction. And what is preventing you from taking a step in that direction? And those are the challenges and obstacles worth tackling. So big idea number one is it starts and ends with purpose. Big idea number two is there is no perfect time. There is no perfect time because I guarantee some of you watching this, you're thinking to yourself, you know what, I've always wanted to do this, or I've always wanted to go there, but there's the, the little thoughts in your head that says, once I get X, or, um, uh, you know, setting this, this, this future time date of once you have enough money, or once I found the perfect spouse, or once I get that promotion, or once I get fired, who knows, but once I, once I, once I get, once I get, once I get, once I get, you keep putting off that once, in your opinion, all of your human plan aligns, then you will do that thing that is courageous, which really isn't courageous at all because you've got the perfect situation. So therefore, where's the courage in that? Instead of going, what feels authentic? What feels purposeful to you right now? Take a step in that direction, even if it scares the hell out of you. And hopefully it is kind of scaring the hell out of you a little bit because there will be no perfect time. You know, whether it's like, I'm going to do that when I retire. Why? Why are you going to put something off to a later time if you know it's what you need to do now? So if you're waiting for things to align perfectly uh, to tell you that this is the perfect time to do it, it's not going to happen. So if it feels right, if you feel that yearning, if you feel that burning, take a step in that direction. Big idea number three, beware of analysis paralysis, right? Paral paralysis through analysis. Say that a bunch of times. That's a tongue twister. We all know what that means is that, you know, again, one of my favorite quotes that I've shared in one of my other talks is the answer to how is yes. So you, you have this thing that you're passionate about. You've got this goal or this idea or this project or this business or this charity or this adventure that you want to do. And as soon as the idea pops into your head of what you want to do, a thousand reasons come in that tell you why you can't do it or why it's going to be difficult. And so you start getting into planning mode or, okay, once I get, again, you go right back into, once I get all these things perfectly aligned or perfectly figured out, then I will do it. But, but that, that, that analysis, it, it, it kills your spirit. It kills your energy. And it also, it kills that inspiration that will actually take care of some of the details once you start to move in that direction. 
you know, uh, a whole world of possibility opens up when you are courageous enough to walk in that direction. But if you think you have to figure out every step of the way, you're never going to take that step. With our adventure, with our journey, like I said, we didn't have the details figured out. We had a few checkpoints along the way, places that we wanted to be in certain time frames, but how we were going to get there and when we were going to get there and what we were going to be doing in between, we had no idea. And that's where the fun was. That's where the adventure was of where are we going to sleep tonight and what are we going to do now? And so pulling into uh, 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 Arches National Park, at sundown, which has to be the most beautiful sight I've ever seen, um, and the car is almost out of gas, and the campground says, we don't have any more room, and I'm going, we don't have enough gas to get out, what are we going to do? And then, I, you know, just, just talking to the, uh, uh, the person working the campground, they're like, well, what kind of car do you have? And I was like, oh, just a minivan. They're like, all right, we've got, we've got one tenth space left for you. Like sweet, but like that's that's where the adventure was. It was not needing to know how everything was going to work out, and then when it doesn't work out, that's just another new adventure. So not letting yourself get bogged down by your fears. Like I said, I'm not I'm not the crazy guy who has no fears. I have a ton of fears, but I've also learned to listen to my purpose louder than I listen to my fears, and that's kind of a a daily routine for me is to make sure that purpose. Is, is louder than my fears. And as soon as I start feeling like my fears are louder than my purpose, I know it's time to make a move or to, uh, uh, to change things up. So that's big idea number three is beware of analysis paralysis. Number four, don't wait for guidance. Um, excuse me, don't wait for guidance from, uh, from other people. Don't wait for guidance. Meaning, if you are waiting for other people to give you their approval, if you're waiting for someone else to show you the way, you might be waiting a long time. You know, uh, 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 in uh, uh, Joseph Campbell talks about having to create your own path, create your own journey. Sure, you can be inspired by other people who have carved a similar path, but if it's not your path, you're just borrowing someone else's journey. And so don't wait for people to tell you how it's done. And also don't wait for acceptance from, uh, from others, especially family and friends. Now, I can honestly say that with this journey, with this adventure, we had a ton of support from our family and friends. But it's not about that. And we had a, a bunch of them saying, you know what? Are you sure? Are you guys sure you know what you're doing? And I was like, I have no idea what we're doing. No, I'm not sure what we're doing. <laughs> That's another good thing, too. Just get it out of the way early that you know what you're doing. As quickly as you say, I don't know, but this is what I feel has to be done, again, you're just allowing your purpose to, to be that compass, to be that north star to guide you along the way. But if you're waiting for acceptance, just like anything in life, if you're waiting for acceptance before you do something, you are not allowing yourself to be authentic and to be true to yourself because you're constantly um, weighing your decisions based on what other people think about you. So big idea number four, don't wait for guidance from others. I'm tearing these off my sheets here. That's why I'm uh, real sophisticated. You like that? It's a window behind my world here. Big idea number five, crazy is a compliment. Let me say that again. Crazy is a compliment. And what does that mean? It means you think about you think about anyone that's done something that you're probably impressed by or you look up to, and they were probably called crazy when they did it. And a favorite quote of mine from a good friend and a good mentor is, the higher you fly, the smaller you look to the people on the ground. I'll say that again. The higher you fly, the smaller you look to the people on the ground. Meaning, the more authentic you are, the more you follow your heart, you're going to soar. And internally, you're going to feel yourself soaring and feeling free, but there's going to be a whole lot of people that are not going to understand who you are and what you're about. They're not going to understand why you're doing what you're doing, and sometimes that's family and friends. So you're going to start to look small to them because they just don't understand what you're doing. But that's okay because you'll be too busy soaring, you'll be too busy flying to, to worry about what others think. And, and you can also trust that those relationships that, that you hope to mend or hope to heal along the way, the more authentically you show up, the better chance those relationships have of just kind of smoothing themselves out.
you know, Steve Jobs had the Apple commercial, you know, a while ago, the um, here's to the crazy ones, right? The crazy ones are the ones that, 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 that change things, that change the world for the better, that, that start new ideas, new innovations, new companies that, that, that break the status quo. But, but it's, it's, you kind of have to be crazy before you can be embraced. And so for me, I, I'm a pleaser. I love to please people. And I know that about myself. And so going off the beaten path is a scary thing for me. But when it comes to listening to my purpose and being authentic, uh, again, it's, 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 it's worth doing for yourself and for myself. So big idea number five is crazy is a compliment. All right, big idea number six, don't stop because of tiny rocks. Don't stop because of tiny rocks. Now, this comes from a story. We were on the road for about a week, week and a half at this point, and uh, my kids right now, they're nine, seven, excuse me, 12, nine, and seven. So two years ago, right, they would have been, let me do that math, 10, seven, and five. Woo, look at that, 10, seven, and five. So we're camping in Buena Vista, Colorado, which, gorgeous, gorgeous town. We're, we're camping in Buena Vista, Colorado, <clears throat> and... We wake up in the morning. We thought we had done a great job with the campsite. We wake up in the morning, and my five-year-old son, Shepard, comes over to us while we're laying in our sleeping bags, and he's got a funny little voice, and he goes, these tiny walks are hurting my head, right? Because his sleeping bag was over these little rubble pile of rocks. He's like, his head was just laying at him all night. It was the most uncomfortable night of sleep for the guy. And he's like, these tiny rocks are hurting my head which was hilarious for us at the time. But it was also a bigger life's lesson because there were lots of tiny rocks along our journey that weren't a lot of fun, that, that weren't comfortable, that, uh, where, where the plan didn't go as planned. And whether that was destinations that didn't work out or, uh, or plans didn't work out or little snafus along the way, a lot of these little tiny rocks kind of threw a monkey wrench in things. But the, the, the funny thing is, is that when you expect them and you sort of embrace them, they just kind of become just another obstacle to overcome another adventure that you weren't expecting. And so every little tiny rock, every little mistake or every little detour is really it's just a new adventure. You know, and, and the best way to know that you're on a new adventure is, is when actually you make a mistake or things go wrong because you clearly wouldn't have planned for that. And as soon as you know that you are in a space that you didn't plan, you know that you're in a new adventure. And what better place to be than just in this, in a new, advan uh, new adventure, just embracing a new journey. So uh, number six is don't stop because of the tiny rocks. Big idea number seven, minivan equals mega fun. Minivan equals mega fun. And I had the t-shirt. I had the t-shirt for a while, minivan mega fun, although I kind of ripped it and had to throw it away, or I would have worn it for this talk. Why minivan equals mega fun? Minivan, when you think about it, we were a family of five, like two adults, three kids. We did not have a luggage carrier on top of our minivan, and we were not pulling a trailer. We did not have a lot of room for stuff. So no video games, no extra toys, no extra clothes. We didn't have a ton of equipment. Everything that we could cram into that minivan for a family of five, that's what we could take. And here is the uh, um, solution that, of course, everyone already knows is it didn't matter. It just didn't matter. Not having more stuff did not matter. Less was definitely more. Was I, any ha was, I, was I any less happy with five shirts compared to 20 shirts? No. Were my kids any less happy with five toys compared to 20? No. You just kind of, we were so good at adapting and responding to a situation. And then it's like I'm in a situation now where I come back to my house and I'm like, uh-oh, we're starting to accumulate stuff again. We're accumulating stuff. And my wife and I, we just made a big Goodwill trip this week. We're like, all right, go into the closets, go into the toy bin. Let's, let's lighten our load because less is definitely more. And for seven months, for seven months, we never slept 
you know, in our comfortable king size bed. Uh, our kids didn't have their normal screens and video games. We only had a couple of changes of clothes. And so for seven months, that's how we lived. And guess what? We loved it. We loved it. And so uh, it, it's kind of a goal for me now to be to get to the point of if we couldn't fit it into the minivan, well, do we really need it? And so I can honestly say that that's not where we are in our house. But uh, that's definitely a goal of mine is to uh, is to uh, to be that light. Less is more. Number eight, big idea number eight, and this applies to, to just about everything. The big idea number eight is it's not a race, and it never was. It's not a race. Life is not a race. And I think most of the fears that jump out at us that want to prevent us from, from, from doing these things that our heart yearns for is because for so long we've been trapped in this race mentality that somehow we're on this fast track or somehow we're on this race that if we take a detour or if we step outside of it for even just a month or a year or for whatever period of time that somehow we're going to get behind. And it's like behind, behind from what? Like who are we racing? Who are we competing with? And at the end of the day, uh, what does it matter, you know, what your friends are doing or what your coworkers are doing or what your neighbor's doing? You know, we get so ingrained into this. It's a, it's a race mentality. And what's the quote? Is it Lily Tomlin? Uh, Even if you win the rat race, you're still a rat. So get out of the race, get out of the race. And, you know, school kind of gets us always sort of competing. Like, like education is a competition. We're competing with the people in our class. And we're trying to get into the next college and we're trying to get that next job so that we can have the perfect spouse. So we can get the new car. And, the, and it's just this endless, endless cycle. And it's a race. And when you step back and go, okay, time out. Who am I racing besides just trying to live the most authentic, purposeful, peaceful life as possible. And this adventure, this journey for my wife and I and our kids was to honor, was to honor what felt purposeful and authentic to us and having the courage to step away from the race and go, who are we racing? We're not racing anybody and neither are you. And so that yearning inside of you, it's yearning to step outside of the race and just be true to yourself. And whether that's a project, uh, a new road trip, um, or whatever it is, uh, embrace yourself enough to go, what would it look like if I stepped out of the race? Would I be okay? And the answer is yes. <laughs> Big idea number eight is it's not a race. Big idea number nine, the real value of Facebook. That's what we found out on our trip is the real, it's not about posting those perfect pictures of your family. The real value of Facebook and what it's always been about, hopefully, is connection. Connection. On Facebook, I've got over a thousand friends. I do not have a thousand friends. I, I, I can count them on one hand, I'm sure, really good friends. But the funniest thing when we were planning our road trip, uh, we just put a, we put a message out on Facebook. Hey, everyone, Alistair and I are taking the kids on a road trip. If anyone has you know, some spare room, we'd love to see you and stay with you for a few days. And just that simple message on Facebook opened up all these opportunities for us along the way where we stayed with an old childhood friend for a week in Boulder. Uh, we stayed with uh, a friend in Big Mountain, California, Big Bear Mountain, California, that my wife went to high school with and hadn't seen since. And they put us up in their vacation home for a week, which was like, holy cow, this is amazing. We stayed with friends out in Ojai, California, uh, which is where I met Brian Johnson at the farmer's market, small world. Uh, we had friends uh, that I went to college with offer their house to us in Arizona. And so it was just amazing. We had to turn down a bunch because it just didn't work on our trip. But I just love that when you see what, what, what some of these social media tools can actually be used for, of, of just extending that idea of community and friendship and how, how, how people are willing to open up their home. Um, and, 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 and it was just so, that was the most fun of the trip, was just going to all these different places and just going into people's homes and reconnecting with people and meeting new people and meeting new strangers and just feeling this tremendous sense of community that we actually don't get a lot of, especially just through our social community. And so it was a great opportunity to really use uh, this social media device as a way to create real human connection. 
And so if you're looking to go on that adventure or if you're looking for someone to give you a, a boost of love and, and inspiration, you know, put it out there on Facebook. Put it out there in social media. And if you haven't gone on to Empios and signed up for the Oasis yet, you better do that as well. Come on, that's a nice plug. Everyone should be in the Oasis. So that's big idea number nine. Big idea number ten is books need chapters. And the reason I say that books need chapters, because this adventure for my wife and I and the kids, it wasn't about this being the entire journey. You know, this was really one chapter, one really badass, awesome chapter in our bigger book. But this was not the whole book. And, and, and just to kind of let people know what happened was, you know, we started in Missouri, went to northern Michigan, went back to Missouri, to Colorado, Utah, Nevada, out to California, down to Arizona, to Texas, back up to St. Louis. And then from St. Louis, we're like, hey, because we had lived in Florida before this, uh, let's go down to Florida. So we drove back down to Florida, and our house that we had kept rented out for, for four years, uh, the people moved out, and we're like, let's go back into our house. And so we, we went back into our house with everything that we had in the minivan spent the holidays, uh, Christmas in our house and thought, hey, maybe we're maybe this is where we're gonna end it back up in our house. Well a month and a half after being there, I took another job on the other side of the excuse me, on the other side of the state. So we stayed in our house for a few months and then we rented a house on the other side of the state and that's where we are now. And so that that ended that that one chapter of our life, that really cool road trip. And so we're in a new chapter right now, which is me having a nine to five job again. And this is a new chapter, but I will tell you this, I will tell you this, is that my heart is yearning for another adventure. And so I've been spending a lot of time in prayer, a lot of time listening, really thinking about, okay, what, what feels authentic uh, to me right now? What feels authentic to my wife and just our sense of family? What is calling to us? And so although it's a really fun chapter right now with the work I'm getting to do and working with athletes and talking about leadership and authenticity, uh, I sense that there's another big uh, adventure and journey coming. And, and that, that will clearly be another chapter, but it's just another chapter. So for any of you out there who, you know, you're worried about why, I think we, we, we give big decisions such finality and we think, well, what happens if I screw up or what happens if it doesn't go the way that I would like it to go? A, it's not going to go the way you would like it to go. It might be better, it might be worse. And B, it's just a chapter. You know, if that's what you're yearning for you right now, go for it. Take that adventure. Try that project. Just try that thing that gets you excited to get up in the morning. Try it. And it's, it's without a doubt, it will lead to another chapter. It might be a better chapter. It might not be the chapter you expected, but it's just a chapter. And if we can... If we can get over some of our fears of thinking that any bad decision is final or any worst case scenario is the end of everything, well then we're always going to stay where we are. We're never going to get out of our comfort zone because we think making one bad move is, is, is the end of things. And so it's just one chapter in your book. And so I invite you all to, to just do what to be crazy, to do something that a guy who really is not crazy at all was crazy enough to do, and that was throw his wife and kids in a minivan and drive around the country with no plan. And at the end of the day, everything worked out. Now, I had no plans or desire to take another full-time job, but that, that's what happens. That's where the next chapter led, and that's what listening to your authenticity and listening to your purpose. So this, this is what feels right to me right now. But I can feel it. I can feel it. It's bubbling inside of me like, all right, there's another journey. There's another adventure that's calling forth, and I'm ready for it. Uh, and so hopefully in this talk, you guys have gotten a chance to uh, uh, hopefully confront some of the fears or obstacles that you might be thinking about. And how, uh, more than anything, I encourage you guys to, to, if you get clear on purpose, if you get clear on, remember, it's not the what you do, it's the who you are, it's the why. What you do is totally irrelevant. Your adventure, the what of your adventure is totally irrelevant. It's, it's the why and, 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 and how. Who are you? 
why are you so 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 fired up and why are you so passionate that's the voice that you need to listen to and when you're clear on that that really is the first and last step is to be clear on purpose clear on authenticity and then just listen to where that heart where that authenticity is pointing you and you guys are capable of it why because i did it and if i can do it trust me big adventures for dummies anyone can do it and so uh i think that's all the time i think i'm right at time i'm sure i can say more let me double check my notes real quick um yeah my last question is what's the worst thing that happened if you rule out death let's just okay yeah death is the worst thing that can happen if you rule out death what's the worst thing that can happen and if it does happen think about it what's the worst thing that would happen actually go down that road what would that look like how horrible would it be great it's horrible then what how would you respond to it and I guarantee if you've made it this far in life you've got the ability to adapt to whatever worst case scenario you can dream up so dream it up and then go down that road because if it actually happened you'd be able to do it that's all my time uh, Thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for this talk. Please send me some feedback if there's uh, any tips or ideas or suggestions that I didn't cover in the talk that will help you on your one big adventure. I would love to help. So thanks, everyone, and have a wonderful, wonderful MPO's day.